The Arrival. On the Sunday before Christmas, Sonny and I are watching MTV when always something there to remind me comes on. If I close my eyes, I can hear Amma singing the refrain in the car. It's still my lucky song, but there's only one kind of luck that I want now. Later, Daddy comes downstairs to Sonny's basement. Reha, I have a surprise, he says. Hello, Reha, comes a voice that sounds like Amma's, and I am standing. I am rushing to her, to my aunt, to Amma's only sister, falling into her embrace. She's the same height as Amma. She smells of sandalwood and coconut and silk. My prima auntie. I am here, she says. Everything will be all right. Another surprise. We leave Sunny's house and go straight to the hospital. When we get there, we find another surprise. Amma is still in the ICU, but she's off the breathing machine and she is awake. I rush to Amma, embrace her gently around the wires and tubes she's connected to, kiss her and tell her I love her a million times. I drink up her pale skin, her dark eyes, the smile curving on her face. Prima Auntie has come and just maybe everything will be all right. My mother's sister. Punam, Auntie says, stroking my mother's cheek. I have to look away at the love I see between them. Daddy and I leave the room and let them talk about whatever sisters share at these kinds of times. And when we leave the hospital, Amma's face is brighter, a dimmed moon slowly waxing. Prima Auntie's voice sounds just like Amma's, but she doesn't look that much like Amma. Her nose is sharper, her eyes lighter, her hair curlier and not as long. But she has Amma's endless energy. As soon as we get home, Prima Auntie looks in our refrigerator and shakes her head. Take me to the market to buy food, she says. You must be tired after your long journey, says Daddy. Take some rest. I cannot rest until I make sure you and Reha have eaten properly. I am here to care for all of you. So we go to Kroger. Auntie looks at the vegetable, raises an eyebrow, and she picks up a huge eggplant, dark as a bruise. Everything is so big here. Yes, but they don't taste the same, I say. All the vegetables in India taste better. Like growing them bigger has here has sapped some sapped them of their flavor. I brought some new I brought some new masala with me, says Auntie. We'll see how good they taste with that. Before we know it, we are home and the kitchen is filled with familiar smells. Rice steaming in the pressure cooker, rasam simmering on the stove, and new smells like the eggplant Auntie has cooked with the new masala. We eat together the piping hot, spicy, sweet food for the first time in what feels like forever. Roommates. Prima Auntie asks if she can sleep in my bed with me. And I have a double bed, so I say yes. It relaxes and relieves me to hear her breathing next to me, to see her sleeping form, so much like my ama. In the dark, she gropes for my hand, and I hold on. I haven't slept this well in weeks. The new rhythm. With Prima Auntie at home, we fall into a rhythm. She wakes early to light the lamps, and I light them with her. She gives us a hot breakfast, idlis or upma, sometimes even mini doses. I go to school and dive into my subjects. I concentrate with all my mind, and reading and discussing and writing brings me joy. A damn to hold back the worry in my heart. I work hard to make Amma proud, to be the most virtuous daughter. Since Prima Auntie cannot drive, my afternoons are still spent at Pete's or Rachel's, and when Daddy brings me home, Prima Auntie is ready with tea and snacks, which she calls Tiffin. We pack things up to bring to the hospital for Amma. Amma has recovered from her pneumonia and is back in her regular room where we can all visit again. Did you feel like you were drowning, I ask? I can't remember, she says. She starts another round of chemotherapy to fight the cancer. She is still weak, too weak to sew or read or watch TV. Sometimes I read to her from my English book or Amar Chitra Kathas or even my science text. Prima Auntie makes soft, bland food, rice and dal and mushy vegetables, and feeds them to Amma like she is a little bird and Amma eats. Her face fills out a little more. Her sleep seems deeper, her energy better. All the nurses ask if they can have the recipes so they can try them. The next day, Prima Auntie brings enough food for the nurses as well. My auntie doesn't have a child of her own, so she takes care of everyone around her, like we are all her children. Pop or alternative? Pete's house is a refuge. Somehow, nothing is awkward anymore. We spend hours working on homework while we listen to our favorite music, pop music station, unless Penelope is in the room, and she insists on listening to the alternative music station instead. Pete rolls his eyes, but I like the songs by Echo and Bunnymen, R.E.M., The Cure. 
Alternative is just pop that's liked by a different group of people. As soon as Penelope leaves, Pete turns it back to WPOP, to the Go-Go's, Def Leppard, Cindy Lauper. We never mention the dance. Every breath you take. We aren't Christian, but we celebrate Christmas because everyone does. This year it is strange without Amma, but on Christmas Eve, Daddy brings up the tree from the basement, and we decorate it with lights and sparkly garlands and ornament, simple glass globes, and all the messy ones I've made in school through the years. We listen to Hindi film songs instead of Christmas carols, and Daddy sings along and comes in too early on all the choruses. Prima Auntie cooks us a feast. Malay kofta in a creamy sauce. Green palau rice. Chana masala. Fresh chapatis. She pulls hot from the pan. It feels festive in an odd way. There is an empty space where Amma should be. On Christmas morning, we open presents in our pajamas. Daddy, Prima Auntie, and me sitting on the floor beneath the tree. I give Daddy fancy shaving cream I picked up at the mall and leather driving gloves lined with soft wool. For Prima Auntie, I've selected the nicest smelling perfume I could find and three pairs of thick socks for her to wear through our cold winter. Prima Auntie gives me a scarf with different shades of blue swirled together like sherbet, so soft against my skin. She, I know she has knitted it herself in the hours I've been away at school. From Amma and me, Daddy says, bringing me a stack of presents. I exclaim over two new sweaters, a pretty blouse, and a new pair of jeans. And that would be plenty, but then Daddy hands me a small package. I tear it open and find a Walkman. I squeal in delight, open it with shaking hands. It's blue and silver. Soft headphones are included in the package. Now I can listen to tapes or the radio anytime I want. I love it, I tell Daddy. We visit Amma in the hospital. We bring her a pale pink sweater and some new books. She is still very tired and weak, so she spends most of her time sleeping, and we spend the time watching her sleep and breathe on her own, and it is the best Christmas present.